Welcome to today's lecture on the topic PDC for ethanol, penicillin and insulin. PDC for ethanol, penicillin and insulin production. So we will discuss on the process design criteria for large scale production of ethanol, penicillin and insulin. So ethanol will be a low value high volume product. Penicillin is also under the same category whereas insulin will come under high value low volume product. So we will see how exactly how these are produced and how the DPT steps for this particular thing are done in a large scale. So these are the three products as I told you. So ethanol, penicillin and insulin where these first two products are low value high volume and the last product is high value low volume. So coming to the first product that is ethanol. So it comes under the low value high volume products and this ethanol is commonly used as a solvent as we all know and it is also used as a fuel. So it can be used as a disinfectant also. So to clean the laminar air flows we use 70% ethanol. So in this way it can be used as a disinfectant also. So this PDC for this particular production of ethanol will require certain things to be kept in mind. And when it comes to ethanol, we know the preferred organism for production of ethanol in large scale is Saccharomyces cerevisiae. So this is the yeast which is used to produce ethanol, so which will act on the sugar source, that is raw materials which we use, can be molasses, it can be corn sugar, it can be sugar beet. So based on any source of glucose, okay, so they are trying to explore now. As you can see, they are exploring a raw material so that they can be a source of glucose because this comes under the category of low value high volume. So you can do a lot of experimentation to see how they can produce ethanol. So in that way the raw materials are selected and then the major reaction involved is glycolysis as we all know to convert glucose to ethanol and carbon dioxide by yeast. So this is the step to show you uh, just simple glycolysis conversion of glucose to ethanol and carbon dioxide. Okay, so even your lignocellulosic materials can be used here for conversion but lignocellulosic material has to be pre-treated. Okay, you have to pre-treat your lignocellulosic material to convert that into simple sugars. So pre-treatment can be done using acid treatment or alkali treatment and various other heat treatments so that the complex molecule is broken down into simple sugars and that can be utilized by ethanol for production. Okay. Uh, it can be utilized by Saccharomyces cerevisiae sorry, for ethanol production. So coming to the optimum temperature for production is around 30 to 35 degrees centigrade. pH is around 4 to 6. Glucose concentration above 100 is inhibitory. So if your raw material has a glucose concentration more than 100 mg per liter, then that can be inhibitory to the yeast. That means your organism that is yeast will eat it and nicely sleep. Okay, something like that. So that can lead to problems because you want that organism to work and produce ethanol but it is eating glucose and sleeping. Okay, So in that way you will have to keep minimum concentration. So you will have to see to it that it produces ethanol in large scale. So you have to see to it that you do not exceed your initial concentration of glucose above 100. You have to keep a residence time of 21 hours. You have to wait for 21 hours so that the organism can do its job of conversion of glucose to ethanol. And finally you will have to use certain systems for conversion and operation they have seen that the continuous mode of operation is good enough to convert sugars to ethanol. Where 95% of sugar is converted to ethanol when a continuous mode of operation of system was used. So this becomes the PDC. So this is exactly the conditions that you have to maintain so that you get the maximum yield of ethanol from Saccharomyces cerevisiae. So in this way we will study PDC for other two products also so that you understand what conditions has to be maintained and once you maintain this condition definitely you will get a product in high quality and that can be further purified by DPT steps and you can enrich it and get a good market. So this is a typical diagram to show you how the DPT step for ethanol is done. So before that we know there is fermentation. Okay. So once there is fermentation you will have the product of the fermented uh, system which is sent to beer well where you have the solid liquid separation done. So as we know 
ethanol we already studied it is a extra cellular product so the ethanol is released into the supernatant so once you send this particular product of fermenter into the beer well you have the supernatant and you have the solids which are deposited on the surface that is below and this liquid which is there at the top will have your ethanol but it might be in low concentration so you will send it to the next system that is beer still so this is a distillation system which will help in enriching your particular product that is ethanol so once it is condensed you will have something called as whiskey so beer is having around 8 to 10% of ethanol but whiskey is ha having around 40 to 50% of ethanol okay it depends on the brand and make and everything else but the concentration is increasing so by using distillation you are trying to concentrate your product and you have a better product now that is whiskey but you are not happy with whiskey you want still high concentration of ethanol in it then you can just go for next two more systems of distillation units where from the heads you can try to remove the aldehydes and other substances and further purify your product and further purified product passes to the condenser and you have the neutral spirits which are around 99% pure so in this way you are trying to enrich your ethanol from 10% to 99% using dpt steps that is distillation units in three stages so in this way finally you are trying to purify the product and you are getting multiple products so imagine this company can have neutral spirits as one product whiskey as one more product and beer as one more product so you have multiple products developed within the same system apart from that you know when you are having solids you have uh, market for that also so the solids which are developed in this particular system are sent to the screens and once the uh, solids are got they sent to dryers and once they are dried you have dried grains and dried solubles and this also has a market it can be used as a animal feed it can be used as a fertilizer so in this way you have a market even for the grains that are developed in the process so this entire process becomes very economical because there are a lot of products coming out from here and each product has got its own market so in this way you can try to have a effective design of dsp for ethanol production which can be widely used so i've just put this slide so that whatever i explained is there in the slide i'll keep this slide for one or two minutes so that you can just have a look at it so coming to the next product that is penicillin so penicillin is a secondary metabolite which is produced by uh, penicillium notatum or penicillium chrysogenum so this produces penicillin by anaerobic fermentation okay this is a fungus which produces penicillin under anaerobic fermentation conditions and the temperature required for its growth is 25 degree centigrade and when this fungus is subjected to stress okay when it is subjected to the stress condition then it produces this compound that is a secondary metabolite and if glucose is present in the media it inhibits penicillin production so in the ethanol production we saw it should not exceed 100 mg per liter but here glucose should not be there only just imagine so you have to take care about this so this becomes the pdc for you so you have media should be such that it is not having glucose because we have seen that glucose inhibits penicillin production so your penicillin production gets reduced if glucose is there in the system so in this way if you design the dsp or a pdc properly definitely your production is will increase and that will in turn help you in gaining profits so coming to the uh, dsp or the pdc for the entire uh, production of penicillin so we as i told you it is anaerobic fermentation and once fermentation is done you send it to the rotary drum filter for filtration to separate the biomass from the filtrate so penicillin is also extra cellular product so you further purify uh, the supernatant that is coming from the filtration system so it is sent through uh, stages of extraction and stripping okay it is sent through this system this this is one stage extraction stripping becomes one stage this is second stage and similarly you have one more stage which is not shown in the diagram so it has three stages of this extraction and stripping so extraction stripping becomes one stage one more extraction stripping becomes second stage and one more extraction stripping becomes third stage so first they add acids and uh, in the extraction system solvent is added it is either amyl acetate or butyl acetate so this is basically done to change the ph 
and due to change in pH there is purification happening in the system and once you add solvent the next step you are adding base so you can see here there is acid here there is base so due to difference in this ionic strength there is purification happening in the system so stripping will uh, be done by adding of base and you will get some base solvent uh, solvents which needs to be treated and again the product which is got from this is again sent to the next extraction system by where you add fresh acids again and fresh solvents again so acids can be based on what acid they are using and bases can be like sodium hydroxide potassium hydroxide it depends on the experiment finally they extract it strip it again again they do in third stage and finally once you have the third stage done you will send it to the crystallization unit okay where you convert this particular liquid form into solid crystals and finally you dry this product so that you remove the excess water content present in the sample and you have a product ready with you which can be packaged appropriately and marketed so in this way you can try to produce penicillin using penicillium notatum in the fermentation tank along with the raw materials so that it produces penicillin in good amount and that can be sent to the market so i've explained the same thing in this particular slide i'll keep this slide for 2 3 minutes so that you can have a look at it so as you can see we had spoken about ripp in the last session so you can see that same thing is even here so they are trying to recover the insolubles by filtration isolation by liquid liquid extraction and purification by uh, one more stage of liquid liquid extraction and final polishing by crystallization and drying so in this way each product will be designed for its own ripp scheme and that will be used widely so coming to the last product that is insulin okay so we know that insulin is a therapeutic protein and this is produced from the uh, it is a pancreatic hormone okay pancreatic hormone which is very much essential for regulating the blood sugar glucose level okay so we know that uh, uh, bovine or porcine sorts were initially used for the production but there were certain rejections there were certain inflammations there were certain problems with this particular kind of bovine insulin that was uh, isolated and used for the purpose so later they started using humulin so this is a recombinant insulin and in that way now coli okay e coli is also widely used for the large scale production of insulin and biocon also is working on that so insulin as we know it has two chains insulin chain a and insulin chain b which are linked by disulfide linkages okay so we we have also heard about something called as pro insulin okay so i'll just put uh, show you two images together so that you can understand the difference between pro insulin and insulin so insulin has a chain and b chain linked with disulfide linkages whereas pro insulin has a c chain which is extra and this a and b chain are linked with the c chain and this structure will be called as a pro insulin so this insulin can be produced by two methods one is two chain method and one is pro insulin method so in the two chain method what they do is they as i told you they use k12 uh, strain of e coli okay and what they do is they produce this two chain that is chain a and chain b in two different cycles and later they fuse this and then this two chains when fused they give you insulin right that is how it is recovered purified and finally you get your insulin so that is why it is called two chain method because you are producing chain a separately chain b separately then combining them to form insulin whereas the next step you are trying to produce pro insulin so the gene for pro insulin is inserted into the plasmid of e coli and then you do uh, 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 the production in that way where you produce pro insulin and then you try to break the c chain from a and b so there are certain methionine linkers and this is broken down or cleaved by using cyanogen bromide so once cyanogen bromide attacks this methionine linkers which are attaching a c to b c once they are cleaved definitely your a and b chain is separate and now you can link it with the disulfide bridges 
सो इन दिस वे यू गेट योर ह्यूमन इंसुलिन और ह्यूमिलिन बाय प्रो इंसुलिन मेथड सो बाय आइदर ऑफ दिस मेथड यू कैन ट्राई टू प्रोड्यूस इंसुलिन बट वाइडली यूज कॉन्सेप्ट इज ट्राइंग टू यूज इकोलाइ सो बोथ द केसेस दे आर यूजिंग इकोलाइ बट द मेथड इज डिफरेंट आइदर यू प्रिपेयर द चेन सेपरेटली एंड देन जॉइन इट और प्रोड्यूस प्रो इंसुलिन एंड देन क्लीव द सी चेन एंड प्रोड्यूस द इंसुलिन so this is just to show you how uh, uh, human insulin is purified is received in the purified form it starts from the biomass so biomass in this case is k12 strain of e coli so once we know this product is intracellular as i told you it is a intracellular product so cell harvesting and cell destruction techniques will be done so that the insulin is released so insulin will be in the form of inclusion bodies okay it will not be in the pure form so now imagine this cycle is for pro insulin okay so they have produced this pro insulin and then they are cleaving this to produce insulin so that is what we saw in the last slide about the second method that is the pro insulin method so now you have the pro insulin with you now they use cyanogen bromide as i told you they cleave it to form pro insulin in the unfolded form and little chemical reaction that is oxidative uh, oxidative sulfidolysis will be done so that the pro insulin will have the ss bond formations and once that is done you can refold it to form certain by certain enzymatic conversions to give insulin in the crude form so by this cleavage you are trying to remove the c chain from the a and b chain and then you are trying to bind this a and b chain to give you insulin so this is the crude form which can be further purified to give you the human insulin so in this way you can try to produce insulin from e coli using cell disruption technique and cyanogen bromide cleavage so this is the entire dpt step to make it simple it starts from upt it starts with fermentation and then a series of dpt steps so what dpt steps are actually followed so they don't do a lot of uh, experimentations the year they know exactly what steps to be done so they do they will follow the same protocol so that they get the same quality of the product because they know it is a high value low volume product so they do not want to compromise on the quality so they will follow a series of dpt steps and these are the series of steps that they usually follow they go for gel filtration first then they go for crystallization and dissolution finally after that they go for again some chemical conversions they go for ion exchange chromatography for further addition then they go for crystallization and dissolution again and then finally they go for reverse phase chromatography it is also called as hydrophobic interaction chromatography and finally you have your final product that is insulin so in this way we have seen the pdc or the product design criteria for three products today that is uh, ethanol penicillin and insulin so a uh, detail of this insulin i'll just show you one more slide so that you understand how uh, is produced or the recovery steps are done okay so it has initial fermentation and dye filtration it has gel filtration so these steps will come under the isolation steps so initial isolation is done by these steps and then you have concentration steps where you use recrystallization you can try to use precipitation okay so by using certain zinc salts okay these are widely used so zinc is used for precipitation of insulin so this will be the concentration steps and they will do certain chemical conversions and they will use even chromatographic techniques to purify the product so in this way you are finally purifying your insulin and you are formulating it so yeah that your insulin is ready for marketing and you can solve the problem of diabetes so in this way we have three products with us which can be widely used that is ethanol penicillin and insulin thank you for watching guys do subscribe the channel for more updates